Chess Trust. Um, I'm just going to give a bit of a welcome to today's session and thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to share the experience of implementing a cash management module, which was to try and improve on a predominantly manual process. Um, today we've got the presenters will be Simon Hosey, who's the senior finance manager in the financial services team who led the project from our side. We've also got Craig Alderson from NEP. Um, we've also got some of the team on the call as well. So we've got Sean Adel and Andrew for the team. So if there's any specific questions they can help me along this, they'll answer as well and get involved. So I'll hand it to Simon, uh, Craig, sorry. Uh -huh. oh, great, thanks. Thanks, Derek. Um, so just as part of the introduction, so my name's Craig Alderson. Uh, I head up the applications team at uh, NEP Cloud. Um, but what that basically means is I get to look at uh, get to look at technology, I get to look at processes, I get to look at improvement and changes, and uh, support our NHS colleagues on on some of those journeys to to continual improvement. So first of all, really appreciate the invitation from Mid Yorks on um, on this on supporting them through this presentation, and I'm looking forward to hearing about the Mid Yorks journey themselves and and some of the challenges they were facing how they've overcome those and how they've used some of that technology to uh, to, to move themselves forward. Um, just want to pause for a brief second and just think about who NEP are and, and how we may have supported this process. But I, I think first and foremost, quite simply, we're, we're part of the NHS uh, and we support our NHS colleagues. So NEP are all any Northumbria Healthcare NHS um, Trust employees. And that's really important because we understand the pressures and the challenges the NHS is under because we're, we're part of it. We're not a consultancy, we're not a software provider. Uh, we're essentially a large community of like-minded individuals that want to see the NHS continually making improvements, be that systems, be that processes, be that technology. Uh, my my, my favourite quote from one of our NEP colleagues was, uh, NEP Cloud isn't just about technology. It's about how technology and people are coming together to get us where we need to be. And, and that's really important. Um, sometimes technology isn't the answer. Sometimes the answer is right in front of you. The wider the network of colleagues you can ask, the more support you have available to you. And that's where NEP fits in. I've been the largest consortium in NHS in England um, with 30, 35,000 system users. Everybody has a voice. Everybody can decide the future direction of NEP. And that's quite easy to suggest as, a, as a, an organisation is that we're customer centric, that's the approach we take, but it's always difficult to, to kind of establish and make that come true. Um, but being part of the consortium, this is, this is what we're all about. Essentially, the system is truly in the hands of the NHS organisations and AP facilitate that. And that's where mid -Yorks fit in with their, some of their determination and wanting to change in some of their process as well. Could you just move to the next slide, please, Simon? Uh, so there's some great points on this slide uh, and I'd love to have more time to discuss uh, each in, individual one of them, but it, it, this session's all about mid so I'm going to keep this really brief. The one thing I want to touch upon though is the, is the single template solution. And that's really, really important and that's where Future Focus Finance fits in as well with, with what we're trying to achieve. So it's really important to us that we've got that single solution. So we drive best practice, we drive change by everybody doing this, using the same technology. Uh, and, and that's key to getting maximum value from that technology. And this, it fits in really well with our methodology around projects and designing and implementing new functionality. So we work with organisations that have an appetite for change, uh, that have the willingness, the drive to make a difference. Um, it, Initially, it's their organisation, but the way NEP kind of functions is that is that development, that work is not just benefiting that organisation. It benefits all of the organisations within the NEP consortium. So we work with organisations, we develop, we enhance, uh, we go live with a solution, and then we make that solution available to all consortium members. And quite a lot of the time, that's at no additional cost. Um, given that NEP is a not-for-profit organisation, because I mentioned we're, we're kind of part of the NHS. So that, that's really important to us. So the value you, you kind of invest in NEP continues to grow. And, and that's where the network forms come in. So during the pandemic, we, we, we changed the way we operate the network forms. We always had 
quarterly meetings on a regional basis where people could come along, share best practice, share ideas and thoughts on how NEP should, should improve and what technology we should use. Um, the pandemic kind of, as it has with everything, it's opened up a whole world of online meetings now, online discussions. So those regional network forums were, were kind of put to one side. We now have national network forums where everybody can communicate and everybody can work together. So um, that's been a, you know, I wouldn't like to say it positive from the pandemic, but it's certainly been something that our organisations have embraced and, and uh, liked that support, that additional support network. Um, last slide, Simon, please. So how's it all fit in with Future Focus Finance? So NEP is all about, it's all about process and best practice. It recognises that organisations want to improve. So we use the, the single system for benchmarking. We highlight top performing organizations. We encourage others to discuss what's going well. We use KPIs through our account management structure to work with all organizations and, and making sure that people have a clear roadmap on what they want to achieve within the next three, six, 12 months. And then looking at future focus finance specifically, we, we started to incorporate some of those benchmarking tools. Some of those accreditations, because we're in a really strong position to make sure that all 40 of our NHS organisations are on that right path to efficiency, on that right path to using the technologies to support their local change processes and support their development requirements. Um, so at, at a recent NEP annual conference, um, NEP hold, we kind of recognise some of the organisations that have gone over and above um in in various different areas and uh, we, we were kind of fortunate to present mid york with um an award for um process innovation and that was specifically around cash management and so that is really fitting that we're, we're here and discussing that today uh, and special thanks from the award went to simon hosey and the finance team at mid york for the work that they undertook so um what within the consortium, Simon plays quite an active role and is certainly recognised as a value maker within the organisation, within the consortium, uh, and had a positive impact within the NHS that 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 we look at, we manage. So at this point, I guess it's a good introduction to hand over to Simon. You're on your mute, Simon. Sorry, I had the slideshow on, so I couldn't see. I apologise. Just let me start it off again. Um, OK, sorry, I don't know how that happened. I'll just quickly whiz through to where I needed to be. Right, sorry. What I was trying to say is I'm a senior finance manager over at Mid Yorkshire Hospitals Trust. Um, we're sort of like a relatively large hospital trust, maybe not on the scale of um, one of the bigger university ones, but look after about half a million people a year. We were over three separate sites. Um, so I actually um, work within financial services um, and we have the responsibility for, you know, treasury management and looking after the bank reconciliations. So just to quickly go through what the problem was then. So when we were looking at the bank rec, it hasn't really changed over the years it's disconnected from the finance system it's just based on lots and lots of uh, manual processes we download bank statements for example we'll put them on a spreadsheet we'll then put a unique code on a spreadsheet we'll then ask people from AR to look when they're matching off income could they do uh, that can we then check it back can we download lots of things off the ledger but, but what it really comes down to is um, looking a lot a lot of these challenges that this manual represents to us it is time consuming it is involves a huge amount of repetitive tasks different people all the time requiring access to the same spreadsheet that has to be manually updated does that spreadsheet get updated every day if somebody's on annual leave or it maybe it's lunchtime maybe you know that the whole thing is very ad hoc and <clears throat> the, 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 the point is it 
the reconciliation doesn't necessarily get done daily, but we kind of used to make sure it was done at least once a month. So in terms of process, there was a lot to be desired. And there was also a lot of other processes that were quite manual. Every time we got a bank statement, we would look to see, for example, have the backs payments come in for the payroll? OK, let's go and do a journal. Have some uh, vouchers for the nursery come in? Do we need to then, you know, journal those across? There's just loads of things like bank charges. These are manual things that happen every day that could, in theory, be automated. So rather than going down the route of thinking, right, shall we write a macro? Should we look at RPA, see if we can get this process completely automated? Is there actually something that we're missing? What, what, what's going on? So if you think about an old set of books that you would have done in um, accountancy 50 years ago, when it was all manual, you'd have had a purchase day book, a sales day book, you'd have had a cash book, you'd have had a nominal ledger, and then you'd have pulled it all together. So it kind of was like a little bit obvious that we're probably missing the cash book in the ledger. Um, why, why is that not there? So just having a look, it, it is there. I mean, if you have one of the big ERP systems such as SAP or Oracle, they do have cash book functionality and that would allow you to have one version of the truth. You wouldn't be running your cash reconciliation process on disconnected spreadsheets. You wouldn't be worrying if people can't connect to the, um, the, the share drives and all the rest of it. So one of the things we sort of realized was you know if we can do that what would it mean so what what we could also get from looking at um the cash management module that's available in oracle is it allows you to automate a lot of these manual processes that we've been talking about so for example items that come in on the bank can be automatically reconciled to bank statements because the bank statements have been loaded into your ledger um, and you can then start doing these standard journals I've just been describing from the bank. If the net pays come in, it always has the same sum number. Well, we know that pay needs to go to the net pay account. Well, why does the system just not automatically do a journal and clear the transaction off? Um, and now it's on the system. ERPs like Oracle, SAP and other you know, products do allow multiple users to look at the same data at the same time. So now, we could say to the AR team, can you go and have a look at the report that shows you the uncleared items at the bank if you want to identify stuff that's going to match your remittances? And when they do the receipts, that will let them um, put the numbers from the bank statement on to the receipt. And then the next day, when we load the next bank statement and run the reconciliation process, that will automatically clear off their report. So they effectively now have a live view of uncleared transactions on the bank. Um, and, and the other thing that I think is incredibly useful is that we do this every day. So I'm going to have a demonstration. It's not the most interesting video to watch, but it's just going to show you how quickly it is to just import the bank statement into Oracle and run the auto rec process. And once that's happened, everything's up to date. Um, and I will talk about some of the manual stuff we still have to do, but we are working towards getting that more automated. So before I carry on, just a quick um, description of the historic process again in more detail. So what we do is we'll take a bank statement from our uh, bank and we'll download it usually into a CSV format and then we'll copy it across onto a spreadsheet. And then that forms part of what we call the cash book. And then we identify a unique identifier that goes against every one of those lines. And then what we do is we try and match stuff off from GL transactions. So somebody will go into Oracle, they'll download the GL transactions for the, for the day, they'll pull those in, they'll see if they match off. Um, and another problem is that, for example, we'll then have to do the manual journal I've been describing, we've got to copy to the cash book, and then matching payments and receipts. So we might have one line on the bank that says your back run for last Monday was two million pounds. Well, those two million pounds might be 400 payments going out on the GL. So somebody's got to go and tie those all up on a spreadsheet, make sure that they're OK. If we've had a return back, so what do we do with that and all the rest of it? And then the pain from the AR side of having to pull all the, the payments receipts, credit card information and you know manually match that. And that's quite time consuming. So I'm just going to have a next conversation about the journey we went on and how we sort of got to where we got to. So the first thing to mention is we didn't have any additional resources. We didn't say let's bring in a consultant or we're going to sort of make protect people's time in any particular way. We, we prioritised this 
um, project because we knew the time savers in the future would then allow us to then reinvest that in further improvements. And when we do implement this, there is a, actually a process where you've got to set up things like matching rules and things. So there, there is a benefit to, to doing this initially and then using that time to improve the process even more. So another quick thing to mention we, we did look initially to say right well who else is using this product uh, i think other people have used these sorts of tools on oracle but we, we're using oracle cloud and we couldn't find any other nhs organization that was using oracle cloud cash management and when we were sort of looking at the oracle documentation it wasn't the most helpful stuff in the world ever so we made a decision um we said right what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a uat environment which is a test system and we're just going to sort of have a real play with the, the transactions. We'll see what happens when you do a payment run. What does that do to cash management for load bank statements? So we set up a whole um, regime of testing to sort of establish what the behavior was. And then as a team, we went through and documented what, what that was and how it worked. So a colleague of mine, Adil Ajmal, went through and actually wrote some of the documentation around how this works. And that's now sort of the key cornerstone um, documentation for other trustees who want to implement this. So we, we now have it well understood and documented. Um, and, and another part part of the, the journey was it was actually really, really hard to test a system like this um, because it kind of requires a live environment to get it to work properly. A good example is a payment run. If I do a payment run today on a test system, that's not going to appear on anyone's bank statement. So how do you get that to appear on a bank statement and then come back into Oracle to then check it's all reconciled? So we had to get quite creative about how we could do retrospective tests and sort of see how they might affect um, stuff that would happen live. We've also done things like manipulate bank statements so they sort of work in a way we'd expect, but we, we, we never really thought this would um, be fully tested until we put it into a live environment for the very nature of what we were testing. So we got to a point um, and we um, set up a working group with NEP. So I think Craig's mentioned before, we've gone from um, maybe going up to Stokesley once every quarter to have a chat with NEP in different forums and all the rest of it. But since the pandemic and uh, teams coming on, we were able to set up weekly meetings with NEP and it was really collaborative. So using the, the screen sharing technology and having those weekly meetings and having things like issues logs, it became sort of like a joint team, NEP, um, and mid Yorkshire going through a lot of the issues. So a good example of that was when we were trying to get the bank statements loaded into Oracle, the bank statements didn't have a unique identifier. So we needed to find a way to get that put into the system. Um, and that, that's how you sort of like go through some of the joint issues and it was really, really helpful. And we also set up a separate group as we started getting more mature with the product to talk to other trusts, um, to see th those people who were coming on next into the implementation, what sort of issues they might have, and then sort of like share some of our learning with them. So they might be able to gain the benefit of hindsight that we didn't have when we first started off. Um, so that was the journey. And just sort of like say, once we implement it, what the benefits are, like I said, I'm gonna show you a very brief uh, demonstration. Um, it's much more efficient for one thing. Um, clearing transactions happens automatically. So when I mentioned a payment run, if you have those 400 invoices you need to manually clear off, that will happen in milliseconds. When you run the auto rep process, it says, I know that that is the amount that went out of the bank for that payment run. I know this is the sum of the stuff that went out in the payment run and it will automatically match them. It's also really, really good because we I keep mentioning the auto posting from the bank and we are going to develop this further, but there are a lot of transactions that appear on the bank that automatically generate a journal. So our net pay now automatically clears payroll and various other things like bank charges, fees are happening. And we are starting to look now at some of the more complex um, stuff coming in on the bank. As long as there's a pattern and there's something that we can relate to, we could should be able to automate it. Um, and just to sort of like another daily benefit is we do now because it's quite an automated process load the bank statement run the auto rec we, we now have a, a daily report every morning we, we know where we are on the bank 
all information on the finance system is included. So uh, I'm really hoping uh, next year's audit this is going to help because what we used to do is like the auditor would say, right, I've got five invoices, go and prove to me they've gone out of the bank. Well, that's now in the system. Your bank statements are in the system. Your invoices are in the system. That traceability goes all the way through. You can tell from an invoice it's not only paid, but it's cleared. It will tell you it's gone out of the bank. So this should uh, I'll be a bit of a time saving, I'm hoping, um, but that's we haven't had the audit yet, so we won't find out. Um, and just to give you an idea, we are going to try and collapse this time a little bit more because, like I say, we, I'll talk about matching rules a little bit as we go through the demonstration. But the more matching rules we set up, the more transactions we identify we can clear directly off the bank. This time will get better, but we, we've already saved half the amount of time it takes to clear these transactions on a day to day basis. Um, so I think I think for us the benefits of um, really starting to show and it's been really really good. Right, I'm going to have to apologise because of the nature of cash management and it has confidential information. I'm just going to have to put a video on and I'm going to talk through it. So because I'm in a slideshow, I'm going to have to come out if that makes sense and then play the video. So hopefully this is okay. So if if anybody's aware, this is Oracle Cloud. You you may or may not have seen this product. So. What we're doing here is we've already downloaded the bank statement of the bank. I don't want to show people that because it might have confidential information. But once that's happened, and that can be a relatively quick process, this is just how quick it is to get a bank statement into the system. And I'll just explain once we've got it in the, the, some of the simple checks we do. So as you can see, this is a video Sean did the other week, and he's just going in. He's finding the bank statement. Um, doesn't take a huge amount of time. I think the second video is slightly shorter than this, so I apologise if this is a little bit boring, but it's just to give you a flavour of what the system looks like. And like I say, we can't show you everything because we'll end up showing you, for example, you know, payment references and all the rest of it. So for GPDR, we're focused on the areas where you don't actually see too much. So we're just processing the file now in Oracle. Um, this is taking the bank statement, loading into what they call the PaaS system. Um, and once that's loaded, they'll be able to um, check it's gone in and then they'll run a job to bring the bank statement into Oracle and then they'll run the auto rec. And I'll just show you how quick that is. Um, like I say, this is live, we haven't edited it. So I think the video in total is maybe three or four minutes. Um, so here we go, it's just checking to see if it's, if it's worked. There's an end time there, so it's, it's fine. So what it'll do is it'll come out of that, I think. There you go. So this is the cash management tool is going to go into. Um, it's going to schedule the bank statement first. Sorry, right. So all we do in Oracle is we run a little job to schedule it in, and then we'll show you a little bit of the cash management tool. And then the next video, we actually go and clear some payments. So that might be slightly more interesting um, if that's possible to describe these videos as interesting. Right. So. Yeah, here we go. Just. Well, So what we do is we just we've got a little routine set up here, just selecting it and then it's going to run it now, submit. Yeah. So hopefully after this point you'll you'll get to see some some cash management uh, module. Yeah, so with it with Oracle, a lot of the jobs that you schedule, you just got to shed the run. Again, it doesn't take a huge amount of time to run, which is why we showed it you live. There you go, it's just running now. Right, that's worked. So what, what Sean would do now is he's going to go into the system, check the bank statements, and I'll just show you some of the quick checks that we do. So obviously, as with anything you do with the finance ledger, you want to make sure the data is complete. So with the bank statement, the key to doing that is to make sure the carry forward and brought forward match. Um, Oracle for its sins only gives you a warning if they don't. So you do actually need to just quickly go and check that because it is possible that if that isn't the case. And if, you know, if that does happen, you can take these bank statements out. As long as they haven't cleared anything, they don't actually need to stay here. You can take them out and put them back in. So what Sean's doing here, this is actually cash management, is going into the last bank statement that ran. You can see it's £49 million. Pounds. That was the, the carry forward value. Um, I think like everyone else at the moment, probably sitting on a quite a lot of uh, cash as a result of the uh, with COVID uh, arrangements. So what what we'll do next is we'll go to the next bank statement. There you go. That's the same number. So we're happy that that bank statement is now in fact correct. So all we need to do now is just run that one job that does the auto reconcile. I think 
um, if I remember the video correctly. Yeah, it's showing you there that the unreconciled items. This wasn't a particularly impressive day, but what because what I tend to have is you load a bank statement, then the payment run will clear and it'll be like one item. But what you need to remember is it's the other bank statements that have uncleared items. So the people in the AAR team might have gone through and I've allocated some of the cash. So what you'll see now is there's 120 unreconciled payments. If uh, Sean just does the refresh down there at the bottom, it'll show you the processes. But what will happen, um, not much more of this video left, thankfully. Um, what you'll see next is the unreconciled items are just going to drop. And they'll, they'll just have cleared. And, and part of the daily process, I think, I think we're trying to sort of show, this will clear. And I can't really show you because of the data issue, but AP, not AP, AR can just literally go in, download a report as soon as this is run and they've got next day's transactions that they can then start working on and allocating to um, remittances and invoices and all the rest of it. So there you go, it's dropped from 120 to 107. So somebody obviously did something yesterday, some of these bank statements, and there's been one reconciled item, which will have been the payment run. So the next video, I think, is slightly more exciting, if that's possible. It's... Um, just showing you the manual rec. So not everything can automatically clear. There's always going to be that situation where you've done a journal, um, you haven't got a matching rule set up. So how do you go about clearing it? Well, cash management is really, really good at this because as long as you set the filters, you can actually select 300 items if you wanted um, and then reconcile them. But this is just quite the manual. So just showing you, you know, when things aren't quite right, you can just tick them off. So here we go. Sean's just going to go into the um, the bank statement for the unreconciled. You can then change the filters once you're in to say, I want to see all the bank statements I've got unreconciled items. I'm just going to pause the video there at the moment because, like I say, because of the fact we've had to stop you guys seeing stuff that you we probably shouldn't be showing you. So we've already applied the filters. So this is only showing credit cards on either side on the cash management. We just to sort of explain what you're seeing here. On the left hand side is the bank statement lines and on the right hand side is the system transactions that have come in from the general ledger onto the bank. So what you're going to see now is you're going to see Sean going through and ticking off payments. And if you can see here, for example, he's ticked one. He's ticked one here. He does quite a few, actually, to be fair. So we'll see it quite a few times. But what you've always got to remember down here is he's selecting items and the amount, and then the difference is telling you if it's in, if it's in balance. And as long as it's in balance, you can reconcile that, and then it puts the items together, and then they they show as being cleared. This is what happens automatically as well when we were the auto rep rule. And like I say, we are working on more and more matching rules. So things like receipts, um, a, all the AP and AR stuff, I think is now reconciling. The next thing we're wanting to look at is credit cards. So for example, you can see on the bank, we get this SL reference number coming through. So we're, we're thinking of using that in the remittance um, reference when people put the receipts on the system. And as long as the amounts match up and the system can identify a bit of logic, it will then be able to clear those up automatically as well. And then that will hopefully get that 45 minutes we were talking about down to a lot less. I mean, hopefully what we'll do in the future is just load the bank statement and then run the auto rec and maybe we'll just check the one or two items that we'll never be able to clear. So there you go, you can just see Sean there clicking the reconcile button. He selected 10 payments. It gives you that error because there's an issue with the fact that Oracle doesn't expect people to do the receipts retrospectively. Uh, pro, no, in, in future. So we do our credit card receipts before they come in on the bank, but that's just a warning. We just need to ignore that. So at that point, he's, he's reconciled. And now you'll see it's gone from 100, I think 180 it was to 102 or something on reconciled items on the bank. So that's just a, an example of what cash management looks like and sort of work that's involved in using it day to day. Uh, I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint if I can get it um, working. I was on that one, wasn't I? So I'm not very good at PowerPoint, so just let me skip through to the right slide if that's okay. Um, so we were here where we were, it said uh, demo, right, that's fine. So the conclusion is, I mean, I'll be honest, I am quite a big fan of writing macros. I'm quite interested in RPA, but we're not always have to use that stuff to automate and improve every process. Sometimes it's about looking about what you've actually got in your system. So we sort of thought initially, well, we know that there should be a cash management module because most ledgers should have some form of cash book. And when we investigated it, talked to NEP, you know, we, we saw that there was. Um, so sometimes that that's what you have, uh, what you can do. You can find other functionality uh, and, and implement that. Um, just to let 
our, our own personal reflection, being the first can be a bit more work um, and you, you can't underemphasize that. But I think it is definitely um, worth doing because I think we've learned a lot and we've been able to put our own stamp on things, which has been really good. Um, we are still working through the report. I think it's just mentioned that we're 99% of the way there to getting a, a completely automated bank rec as well. There's a little bit of a niggle with some of the timings between when it clears on the bank and where it clears on GL. But we're hoping by the next couple of weeks, maybe month, that'll be sorted as well. Um, and just to make you, you aware, it is definitely an ongoing process. We haven't implemented this fully because until you've got every matching rule set up, you've got everything um, as finely tuned as you can, you're never really going to be fully implemented. And there are other functionalities within cash management we want to start looking at next. So if a cash management module with an Oracle can do things like liquidity for Cast. We, we it appears it can do direct payments on bank um, and we also need to implement our other bank accounts so like a lot of you guys you probably have two bank accounts so the next thing we want to do is get our lawyer's bank account on here as well and just the the one thing to say from our perspective it was just definitely worth the pain it was one of those projects um, we've sort of been thinking about for a couple of years but you know jumping in with both feet was definitely the right approach um, and conversely even though we had the pandemic, I think it worked slightly better for us for this project because of the way we could collaborate with other people, other trusts and our provider. We could just get them literally in the same room whenever we wanted and talk through the issues. And just to finish off before I go to the question and answer, we will send these slides out as, as well if you need to. But if anyone wants to contact us at Mid Yorkshire, our email addresses are on the um, on the board. I would like to thank um, my team and the people who you know we led this project with it wasn't just myself we, we had a lot of people helping I mean Sean and Adele who were on here did a lot of the testing and they actually reconciled a full month's worth of transactions at one point in the test system and you know I really appreciate the help on that and there's contact details as well for NEP if you want to be in touch about the uh, the product that we're actually using and I don't know if uh, I hand over to someone else at this point we've got a question and answer session if, um, Okay. Hey Samuel, do you want to come on and just ask your question? Oh, was there a question? Sorry. Yeah. Did Samuel? You... I, I can't see Teams because I have this uh, presentation apart. Uh, is somebody going to read out questions? Sorry, I don't yeah, know. So there. Samir was asking, are we still doing external bank recs too on Excel? And if so, do we see there being potential for those to stop and have the system? That, that's that's the master place for the recs. Yeah. That's the that's the plan. Um, so what we're doing at the moment is we ask dual running the manual rec just because we're working on the, the reporting and it is nearly near, nearly there but once that has been done we will just be running hopefully the uh, the, the automated report that comes out of Oracle for, for the bank rec. Um, even if you don't um, use the reporting the fact that it's telling you what's clearing what it will help you with any sort of manual rec anyway because we know what creditor payments have cleared the bank we know which AR payments have cleared so it does does help even if you maintain some element of manual rec it, it will improve and streamline that process i've got another question for robert brompton and um, make the question from that is it possible to allow for multiple bank account bank accounts to be set up working with different allocation rules yeah i don't know if that's a question for me or nep but we are looking at doing our lives bank account and you have something called a house bank the house bank will um, relate to which which bank it is so obviously different banks have different types of bank statements and obviously they would have their own matching rules i would have thought okay uh, question for mike davison uh, if you were doing the project again what would you do differently if anything I don't think I would. I think it worked really, really well because it, it was quite ad hoc and collaborative. It's like we got together on teams and we had these sort of uh, meetings where we would, you know, come back with our findings from testing, working through all the issues and issues log. Um, if I could have done anything better, it would have been to possibly, um, uh, well, if, if benefit of hindsight is brilliant. We got we got stuck at one point because uh, we, we didn't have this unique identifier on the bank that was coming through from the bank statement. So if we'd known that was an issue in advance, obviously maybe we could have uh, 
preempted that because that did stop the project for a couple of months while we were trying to figure out a solution. But I, I, I think I don't think we would have done much differently, to be honest. Uh, we've got a question for Nahim. Do you want to come on your camera, Nahim? Hi, uh, hi Simon. Just a hi. quick question. So we've started the testing process for our bank, correct? Um, we had 330 rows on the bank statement, of which 20 auto reconciled. Is that a reasonable proportion? Well, what you'd expect is the auto rec will clear off your credit, uh, your creditor payments. And for us, that's like one line on the bank rec. Um, if you've got your rules set up so you can clear off all the stuff you would do manually, like your journaling, but you've got to set those rules up. So, for example, the payroll backs coming in, and if you have supplementary backs coming in for payroll, that can all be automated. We have a lot of cash coming in that goes to our Abacus Nursery, which relates to childcare. Uh, vouchers or something then again we could uh, set rules up to sort of like deal with those but we, we what we decided is because of the nature of this system if the core functionality was working it would still save time it will still help so we, we put it in and then as we go along with it we're going to improve the matching rules what you'll find is as you load bank statements there will be unreconciled items but your APAR team will be going through that report putting in the reference numbers on their receipts. And as we run the auto rec every day, it's not just coming off the top bank statement, it's coming off all the other ones because they might have allocated the CCG income um, yesterday. Uh, and that was on the, the bank statement from two days ago, for example. So it, it won't be on today's bank statement. So it will clear what it can, but then it'll keep clearing, if that makes sense. I don't know if that answers your question, but I don't know if Sean wants to answer that question in terms of operationally, because like I said, I don't do this every day. I sort of led the team that implemented it, but I don't go on every day and use it. Gee, thanks, Simon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a, it's a, that's a, a reasonable hit rate uh, for what you said as, as a, for an initial one. Like Simon says, as you improve on your rules and your, and your receipting um, guidance, i.e., always receipt with this in this format with this number at the beginning your, your hit rate will improve um uh like our, our biggest one at the moment is credit cards which we, we have, we're manually wrecking off at the moment but our next step is to try and get those so the majority of them will auto wreck so that will that will be 20 odd transactions each day potentially um which doesn't sound a lot but we don't have as many we don't have 300 transactions a, a day normally <laughs> on our bank account so it, it's all relative um, but if you've got, say, 50 credit card machines, then that's 50 transactions a day. Um, so that's a massive improvement on having to go tick, 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 tick. Uh, so, and I think I'll stop there. <laughs> so I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Another couple of questions in the chat. So Anthony Lee's asked, have we been up to Oracle users outside the public sector who have been using automated bank recs for many years? Um. I don't know if we've been outside the NHS. We did ask NEP at one point to reach out to Oracle and find out if there's any other users using Oracle Cloud cash management. Um, I don't believe that they um, they could find anyone. Um, I mean, my own experience is I used to work for Kirtley's Council uh, and we implemented SAP and that had a similar functionality to this. So I guess I could argue maybe I consulted myself a little bit because I have used uh, an automated uh, bank rec tool before. But it is different. Every every product is different. So SAP is completely different the way it deals with our, uh, compared to Oracle on this sort of thing. But we, we, we didn't find anyone um, who used Oracle Cloud uh, cash management, unfortunately. So we sort of had to do it ourselves. Another question for Ruth Davenport. Uh, what teams did we involve in the testing? Accounts receivable, technical cash, etc. Um, we tried to involve everybody who we thought we needed to have on there. So uh we tried to get ap and ar involved um so we got uh, some input from them we got uh, the the technical um um oh, sorry, the treasury team who do the sort of like wrecking every day we didn't want to push it too far out to you know the general office or people out within the the trust because a i think the complexity of what we're talking about probably would have gone over the head and i think like sean says with credit cards we probably just need to define a pro forma that we need to use in terms of filling out the um 
the, the, the cards. So that is the next step, isn't it? It's like, if it's manual, humans are quite good at sort of like interpreting fuzzy information. So if they haven't quite read the receipt right, well, the person can easily take that off, but a machine kind of needs some logic behind it. So that is kind of the next phase of this, is with rolling it out within other parts of the hospital where they're doing their own receipt and we need to be quite strong in the way we police that. I've got another question for Graham Ambler. So he's asked, do we automatically create receipts for income off the bank statement? You, um, I don't think we do it for receipts. It works through a, something called cash management transaction. So that's effectively a journal. So it's sort of effectively GL cash. But yeah, we, we can do that as long as there's some logic that we can program into it. So if it knows what the revenue distribution combination for that code is, uh, because it's on a table and it says if it comes on the bank statement it says bank fees put them there we can do that but if it requires you know somebody it, it, yeah I, I mean you, it doesn't do receipts it does it, although it's like a receipt if that makes sense it's it's like a separate sub ledger transaction with an article called cash management i don't know if that answers your question or not but i think the answer is probably yes does anybody get any other questions they'd like to ask anybody I mean, just one of the other things we'd like to add to this as well is like we've been we're one of the we're an organization working towards level two accreditation and one of the tools that we've been using is the systems maturity toolkit and i think we did that for the cash management module and looked at the process it's really good for looking at process procedure and roles and responsibilities of the team and i think this is one of the things we reviewed it before we implemented this so it's something we can go back and we've seen lots of opportunity for improving as part of this um, technical development and I think that's one of the things we're keen to try and find organisations who want to work in a working group on that because we, we find we can get lots of benefits from that especially on how we use the system well and I think that's one where the NEC are supporting as well or NEP because they've got user groups as well that can help sort of work on this as well so again if anybody's interested in anything like that let us know because we're, we're really keen to sort of investigate that area. Um, yeah, nothing else. Is there anything else that you, Simon or Craig, you want to add then before we start finish this, bring it to a close? I, I don't know. If, I think for me, it's, it's 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 not just about one thing or the other. So it's not like can we automate a process and say we've automated something. It's not about can we improve the control environment because we now have all our bank statements directly loaded into the ledger. I think it's about the whole thing. It's just it feels right. It's like I've worked on systems before, for example, where the accounts receivable uh, system isn't part of the same suite of systems as a general ledger. So you've got two separate systems and it's a bit like that with your cash book. It's like when you bring it all together into the same place, it's better because you have all your data in one place you can, and you can see it. So like I say, you can trace any payment through to an invoice directly within the ledger. You don't have to like drop out, look at a spreadsheet, find the bank statement um, and to me it feels it just feels right so like I said I've used this sort of tool before and it felt like we were really missing something when I came to this position and we didn't have that functionality and putting that functionality into Oracle it just feels like we got it set up correctly again if that makes sense I, I just you, you don't know you've missed it until you've got it and I, I think from my perspective I'm glad we've got it and that's kind of where I'd like to move it I just had a quick quick closing comment on that, I guess. Well, first of all, I can see from the invita invites and the people in the meeting, there's a, there's a, a lot of NEP organisations in this discussion, which is, is really great. Uh, so I obviously encourage them to, to reach out through the account management and uh, start using the, the technology that Mid Yorks have helped us to design in terms of a fit for purpose cash management solution. There was, a, there was a comment around or question around in the private sector and have we reached out to those organisations? And I think that's a very valid point. Um, and there's a couple of things to add to that. We're, we're obviously, we're, we're trying to learn as much as we possibly can from how people have configured uh, Oracle solutions, SAP solutions in, in the past and how that might be relevant to the NHS. Um, those who have worked with Oracle outside of NEP or, or directly with Oracle will know that and I don't think there's any Oracle colleagues in the call, just quickly check. Um, they'll know that you get a configuration, you get a product, sometimes you get a skeleton, you get something to work with, but 
it's never quite there for the NHS. There's always gaps. There's always something that's not quite right. And that's where Mediogs have helped us really and, help, and, and worked with NEP to say, wait, well, this is the standard Oracle product. How do we then take that and make it a, a viable product for the NHS, for other organisations to benefit from? And, that, and that's the work that's gone into it. And that's kind of where we, we see ourselves fitting into the process. So uh, really, really pleased to see uh, the solution demonstrated and, uh, and Simon's positive comments. So that's great. Okay. Um, just want to thank everybody for coming along, and if you if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. I say we're quite happy to share the experience we've gone through. Um, so thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys, that was really useful. Okay, I think it's 72 people there at maximum. Yeah.